All right, so we're going to go through the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 29. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm going to do in this one, because uh, there's, there's a lot of verses, and I want to be able to not get through so many that we miss some stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm going to cut it off right around verse 14 or so, and then we'll elaborate, and then we'll do the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So in verse 1, it says, O foolish, unintelligent, and sensual Galatians, who has bewitched, maligned, and false representations uh, you with should not obey the truth, which is the Torah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, whose eyes Yahshua HaMashiach has clearly portrayed that was previously ordained among you as crucified? This accusation only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit of Yahweh? And, and this is about producing the divine seed, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Getting back to this, because obviously he's talking to a people that lost Mm -hmm. the divine seed mm -hmm. or in the process of it um, of Yahweh by works as an act of your efforts of the law of Moses or by the hearing of faith. Mm -hmm. Are you so foolish, unintelligent and sensual of the senses having begun in the spirit of Yahweh? Are you now being made perfect by means of fulfillment of your flesh to its completion to make it perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered with exp experiencing pain and vexation so many things in vain and without reason, if indeed it was in vain to the point of complete failure and without reason? Therefore, he who supplies with aid and nourishment the spirit of Yahweh to you and works with fervent miracles with power and strength among you, does he do it by the works as an act of efforts of the law of Moses or by the hearing of faith, that is a moral conviction of truth. Just as Abraham believed by entrusting his spiritual well-being into Yahweh, and it was accounted like taking inventory to him for righteousness, which is equity of character. Therefore, now know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that Yahweh would justify as regard as innocent the Gentiles who are non-Jewish and who are pagan by faith preached the gospel, the good news to Abraham beforehand, mm -hmm. saying, In all you all nations, non-Jewish, who are pagan, shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith and are blessed by invoking a praise on with believing Abraham. For as many as are works as an act of effort of the law of Moses are under the curse by Im, 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 pre, pre, I'm sorry, impreg, impredicating an unannounced evil, for it is written, cursed, exorbitant, and wretched is everyone who does not continue, stay in the same place, and preserve in all things as a whole, which are written in the book, the scroll of the law of Moses, to do them. So clearly he's advocating you stay in it. Mm -hmm. Okay? but that no one is justified and rendered innocent by the law of Moses in the sight of Yahweh is evident, clearly manifest, or just who are innocent and holy shall live by faith. Yet the law of Moses is not in existence as to not of be of the source of faith, of moral conviction, but the man who does them shall live by them. The anointed one, has redeemed and brought us to the, uh, bought us as a ransom, us from the curse of the imprecating and an announced evil of the law of Moses, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed, exorbitant, and wretched is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of fine speaking of adoration of Abraham might come upon as a resulting purpose of the Gentiles who are non-Jewish through Messiah Yahshua, that we might receive the promise, which is a divine promise of good of the spirit that is divine of Yahweh through faith. So we're going to pause right there and talk a little bit about that because some of the wording there, I'm sure is going to be very confusing to some people. Mm -hmm. But you kind of touched on it before we even read this. But go ahead and uh, give your, your perspective. No, it... it, it it's simple to me, to me, the way I see it. You know, uh, uh, if I'm, if I'm, if I remember correctly, I think this chapter is talking about um, they telling the uh, non-Jewish believers 
that were coming in. Now these were supposed to be already Jewish believers that's mm -hmm. teaching them. Right. And um telling them they got to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. And Paul was saying, that ain't how you got saved. You already saved. Right. So what is this adding to you? Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. you can't add nothing to this uh to make you any better. In the form of righteousness. Right. Yeah. It, it, to make you any righteous. Mm -hmm. I put it like that. And so he's telling you, uh well then how did you come? Let me let me explain. I, I taught you about Abraham. He went all the way back to Abraham now, before Moses. And how was it? It was explained to Abraham. Abraham saw Yeshua days. You with me? Mm -hmm. And was taught what was going to happen. Maybe Abraham was thinking he was going to be there to explain it. You know, that it would happen faster. But it didn't happen during Abraham's t generation. Right, right. It went on and on and on. And they still wouldn't allow Abraham's promise to be manifested until Yeshua came. And now once Yeshua came, we preach that now the door is open. You coming in. It's always been a way for you to come in. One law for the stranger. One law for the homeborn. Mm -hmm. If he want to come in and keep your laws then he would be one that was like born in the land right yeshua came in and kept it and now he's keeping it through us but the law that they're talking about was a law that showed you deserve a certain kind of punishment circumcision didn't show that right i, I you know this is a, one of those subjects where i think a lot of people get very confused and i can understand why and i don't fault anybody for being confused about it because there's a lot of back and forth right in this dialogue mm -hmm. and one minute it seems like get rid of the law mm -hmm. and the next moment it seems like well the law is still there and you should do it mm -hmm. you know so it's like so let's let's put this in in perspective a bit so as a new testament believer who received yashua hamashiach and you now have the ruach mm -hmm. that is your righteousness mm -hmm. that is your foundation right right mm -hmm. now Let's take two different people with that. Let's take one who's a Jew and one who's a Gentile. Right. And the Jew was keeping the Torah as best he understood it. I'm not going to get into technicalities of it. Mm -hmm. Let's say he's keeping the Sabbath and dietary laws, you know, basic stuff. The Gentile was not. Mm -hmm. But Yahshua looks down on both of them and he gives them their spirit to open up their mind so that they can receive him by faith. Mm -hmm. That same righteousness is imputed to both of those people equally. Mm -hmm. One might be dealt a measure of faith a little more than the other, but that's a whole nother discussion. The point here is, is that in that moment, you cannot add anything to that righteousness. That's where you are justified. Mm -hmm. That's where you're set apart. That's where you're sanctified. And that's where he wants you to stay and don't deviate from that concept and start adding other stuff into this. OK, now let's go back to the law and where that fits. So the Jew who was keeping the law was keeping it under the Old Testament dispensation. He was under a death penalty because his righteousness couldn't exceed the righteousness of the letter of the law of mm -hmm. Moses. Mm -hmm. And in that state. What it did do, as the schoolmaster we brought out the last time, it led him to the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And he got Messiah now. Mm -hmm. So he's good. He's real good because not only does he have the Messiah, but he ha now has the Torah where the Messiah is going to say, I brought you up to this point. The schoolmaster brought you up to this point. Mm -hmm. But now I'm going to take you away from being under the schoolmaster, the teacher, and I'm going to make you the teacher. Mm-hmm. Because my Ruach living in you is now giving you a heart to learn how to keep this law in a way you couldn't do it before as a blood-born Jew who did not have the Ruach. Mm -hmm. Now you're really going to be set free. Mm -hmm. For the Gentile who wasn't keeping the law, he was dead according to the law too. Mm -hmm. Because he was disobedient, he didn't have a teacher that could bring him to the Messiah. He was out in the world. He's of the wild olive tree, unrestrained by nature. OK, unregenerate. Mm -hmm. He's under the death sentence also. OK, but now he's got the Ruach and now Yahweh's showing him for the first time. It's great that you believe in me, but now I'm going to start convicting your soul and your mind 
that what you used to do and thought was normal was okay, which was actually contrary to the law, mm -hmm. you now can't get away with with me living inside you. We mm -hmm. need to clean this thing up. Mm -hmm. So I'll kind of say it like this with the law. Where any human can understand this. So let's say in my house, my wife, and I, I'm going to use this because I'm guilty, so I'm a sinner in this way. My wife has a law which he doesn't really enforce, uh, that I, I should be taking the garbage out, right? Twice a week, should take the garbage out. And I, I forget all the time to do it. So I'm guilty of sin. I'm, I'm guilty. Whether I go into the lake of fire or not for that, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I hope I can repent of it <laughs> before mm. I get to that point. But if I, let's say I went, and I took the garbage out twice a week and put it out front for the garbage man, mm -hmm. I would be fulfilling the righteous requirement of the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, be, I, I, I'm on good terms with my wife. But if, if I really want to get good attention from my wife where she pats me on the head and blesses me a little more than she normally does, she, she blesses me a lot. I don't want to say she don't. But she'll bless me a little bit above and beyond all you can think or ask or imagine. Mm -hmm. That kind of a blessing, right? Mm -hmm. If I went around the house before I took the garbage out and I started vacuuming, I started lifting up the pillows and, and vacuuming out all the, the breadcrumbs and stuff that goes in there, or popcorn or whatever, and, and moving the couches out of the way and cleaning all that up. And if I see a smudge on the wall, I get the 409, I start cleaning that up. And then when I'm done all that and filling the bag up, and then I bring it out. Which level of righteousness do you think is higher than the other one? They're both the same law. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is when you're going by the Old Testament dispensation of keeping the law as a Jew supposedly would, if he wasn't following Talmud, right? He'd be fulfilling the letter of the law. And there's a level of righteousness in that because it's meant to preserve him. So that he can get to a place where eventually it leads him to Messiah if you don't have in the entanglement of Talmud and rabbinics mixed in with it, which is going to prevent him from seeing it. It's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. It would take a direct act from Yahshua to break that cycle of defeat in that person because mm -hmm. they can't do it on their own. But once he becomes a believing Jew and he starts saying, oh, I used to keep the Sabbath like this. But I see it's it, 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 this is the real spirit of the Sabbath. And he starts going above and beyond the letter of the law and keeping it in the spirit of the law even deeper than what he knew as a, as a natural Jew. But now as a spiritual Jew, you think Yahshua is going to be more pleased with him in the second situation? Of course he is. So, again, the concept of Talmud, rabbinics, traditions of men in general, whether it's that or Christianity or any other religion that is contrary to the truth, Mm -hmm. is designed to put you into a state of mind where you have to have your testicles crushed and you will not be able to receive the true spirit. And this is what Shaul was saying is that basically you've traded in for another husband. So you're a polygamist. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a spiritual polygamist mm -hmm. is what you are. Mm -hmm. So that's all, you know, all I kind of wanted to say about that part. Yeah, I just saw... Um And it's each time that I've read it, you know, that they're putting the works of the law over the faith. The faith, you know, exactly. And, exactly. and, and though they said, they, though these were people, I believe, who said they believed in Messiah, but they didn't believe in Messiah for their righteousness. No. They believed in the work. Well, then, if you just believe in the works above all, that's what you're going to give more uh, attention, attention to. to. You right. know, and so, okay, That's now the you got to do force. them all now yeah. and you don't need Messiah right. no more, but right. you just with your mouth saying, I honor him, but with your heart, it's a you Mary. don't. It's a Mary syndrome. Yeah. So busy cleaning the house that mm -hmm. you're not sitting down to deal with the spiritual things. Exactly. And so when he, when he come and say that, okay, that law killed you, that law told you it was something else other than Yeshua that had to clean you. You see what I'm saying? That's exactly so now, the point. If you're going back to that for your righteousness, you got to go back and get the other one to give you this momentarily right, momentary uh, righteousness. Uh, but 
this righteousness in sure in your sure is forever it's permanent you know yeah. and nothing can replace it and i see a teaching that was leading these people and i was there i'm telling you i was there now i'm i i, I guarantee you the person that's teaching will say no he wasn't teaching but i was there boy don't touch that don't go into a center house if you go into a center house you defiled that's right yep how was i gonna get clean if you're sure wasn't my my um and you know how you cleaning um, you know how that was true mm -hmm. by the evidence of destruction it left behind elaborate on that one for well what i'm saying is the person is saying oh no i'm not teaching that uh-huh well the evidence that you are teaching it is when i implement what you're saying it left a whole bunch of destruction behind yeah i, I can remember one one day we was coming out for the we take a like we call it portion time on like we might do here have a little lunch mm -hmm. period before we go back in and complete the rest of the shabbat uh and it was a a, a a little restaurant next door to the temple and the kids couldn't get the key to work and so we were standing out there you know before we left and they asked me to see can i unlock it and i went over there and twisted it and, and to unlock it and he told me you you shouldn't have did that you're going to cause uh you breaking the sabbath you're going to cause mm -hmm. them to be in sin by doing that for them by allowing them to go in and work and i i, I couldn't see that but these are mm -hmm. the the different things that was crushing my mind because i couldn't understand why would that take the righteousness of Yeshua away from me. It's right. sort of like the the, the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan. Each one of those priests believed in their mind that they'd have stopped and helped that Samarit that that beaten and battered man on the side of the road. It would have took away some form of righteousness away from them that they wouldn't have been able to worship Yahweh. And this is what I see in the teaching that they were still teaching in Galatians, Colossians, Corinthians, mm -hmm. all the same argument. And everywhere Paul went, he had to address the it, same issue. It was a common yeah. um, enticement mm -hmm. that is pre prevalent today as well. And we can fall into it. Oh, it's yeah. so easy to but fall you, into it. It's, not, it's, it's hard to do it if you mm -hmm. educate yourself You're right. and ask Yahweh to show you he doesn't want you to be ignorant. Ask him to show you. Experience. You know, experience. What we're talking You're about. You're going to need it. Mm -hmm. Things are getting tougher and tougher out there. You've been there. I've been there. Yeah. You probably ain't did the same things coming out the block that I was doing, but it probably was something else different that you were believing back then well, that you found out later on. Can't do it. That you that it wasn't even necessary. No, it wasn't necessary. It was, it was a burden. Right. Okay, so picking up in verse 15, we'll finish the rest of this chapter. Mm -hmm. Brethren, I speak in a systematic discourse in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant and contract, yet if it, if it is confirmed, mm -hmm. which makes it authoritative, no one annuls to the point of neutralizing or adds a supplement to it. This is mm -hmm. what we've been saying. Mm -hmm. Now, to Abraham and his seed, which is Joshua, because it's large right. S. Right. Uh, were the promises, which is a divine promise of good, made. He does not say, and to seeds, which is dealing with humans, mm -hmm. as something sown by sperm, mm -hmm. as of many, but as of one. And to your seed, as something sown by sperm, who is the anointed one. And this I say in a systematic discourse, that the law, which is an advisory um, covenant will, which was 430 years later, cannot annul invalidate the covenant that was confirmed before by ratification by Yahweh in the anointed one, mm -hmm. that it should make the promise, which is a divine promise of good, of no effect, to render entirely useless. Mm -hmm. For it is, it is the inheritance, which is an airship of possession. So if the inheritance, which is an airship of possession, is of the law of Moses, it is no longer of promise which is a divine promise of good. But Yahweh gave as a favor and a grant of kindness as a pardon of it to Abraham by promise, which is a divine per promise of good. What purpose then does the law of Moses serve? 
it was added and placed additionally to increase because of uh, transgressions and violations of it. Till the seed, Yahshua, mm -hmm. as something sown by sperm should come, to whom the promise was made as a requirement to do this, it was appointed and arranged as a command through the angels by the hand of a mediator who reconciles. Now a mediator who reconciles does not mediate for one only, but Yahweh is one. Is the law of Moses then against the promise, which is a divine promise of good of Yahweh? Certainly not, with absolute denial of such a thing. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. But the scripture has confined and closed up all under as to be placed beneath sin that is an offense, that the promise, which is divine promise of good, by faith in Yahshua Messiah might be given to those who believe by entrusting his spiritual well-being into. But before faith came, as to mount a guard for protection under as to be placed beneath the guard of the law, enclosed in for the faith which would afterward be revealed as removing off a lid. Therefore the law of Moses was our tutor, whose office was to take us as school ch children to school to bring us to a place in the anointed one that we might be justified and rendered innocent by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under as to be placed beneath a tutor who ha whose office was to take us as children to school. For, no doubt, you are all sons and a, 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 a son of Elohim through faith in Messiah Yahshua. For as many as you were baptized into by reaching into the point of entrance into the anointed one have put on as sinking into a garment that arrays you in the anointing. There is neither absolutely no Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in the anointed one, Yahshua. And if you are Messiahs, then you are Abraham's seed as something sown by sperm and heirs a share in a lot of being pardoned according to the promise, which is the divine promise of good. Hmm. Baruch Hashem. Praise him. It I don't know I just I'm telling you it's just so clear to me but I like you say I could see the confusion in it uh because I was confused when they used to oppose me with those uh this scriptures you know but I just see that nothing can replace Yeshua mm -hmm. the law was there to show you that it was something coming to show you mercy it's a promise and it's a seed it's a sperm that's going to make a seed. It ain't going to be no physical sperm. It's the spiritual sperm that we're going to come and show mercy. Right. When the law was saying, okay, under the law, I can kill you for that. Under the law, you could be cut off from that. But here comes somebody to render you mercy that you don't die for that offense but don't go back and do the offense anymore right. so it's not about doing away or not keeping the law it's about using the law as your instrument your vehicle to mercy mm -hmm. and if you if you can't see it today then you don't you really is hindering yourself from coming and receive mercy you know uh, uh, the Bible talks about the judgment seat of mercy. I come boldly before your throne of grace, your throne of mercy. Well, if you don't have the vehicle to get you to the throne, what's going to give you the authority to go right there? Even in, in biblical times, the queen couldn't even go to the king mm -hmm. unless he held up some instrument or vehicle to say, come on in through this vehicle right here. <laughs> are you with me mm -hmm. and so it's the same way today we cannot get to Yeshua except as Paul we talked about the last time I did not know sin except the law said okay so good point mm -hmm. because I'm listening to you and I'm thinking to myself what if there was no Torah mm -hmm. and Yahshua just came and he called people and he gave them his spirit it would have been very difficult for the Jews or mm -hmm. the rabbis to hijack the faith. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you're talking about a vehicle. See, for the Jews and the rabbis and the Sanhedrin and all these guys, the Torah was actually that vehicle. Mm -hmm. Because what did they do? They hijacked the vehicle. And when they got that vehicle, they respray painted it different colors. They put graffiti on it. They put Mexican tassels inside it, leather seats. They did all kinds of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So now it kind of looks the same, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And then they come and they try to present that new vehicle to you mm -hmm. as a Gentile. Mm -hmm. And they're like, this is prettier. This is better. It's got more bells and whistles on it. It's louder. It's got neon lights on it. LED lights lighting up the ground when you drive at night. Ain't that cool? And we fall for it. Mm -hmm. And yet, it's a vehicle that's stolen. So you get in that car, you start driving that car, and you see the blue lights in the, in the background, and you pull over, and they find out it's a stolen car. Mm-hmm. And it happens to belong to somebody who's very prominent in the society. And they're going to take out their retribution on you. And they're going to prosecute you to the full extent of the law. Man, you got some consequences, legal problems that you're going to have to deal with. Yeah. It, it's like you say, it's crushing. It's crushing. It's crushing because you can't rightly divide what's true in it. Can't. And so, for me, and I tell you, I, I've been down this journey. So, I'm talking from experience you know how this thing can crush you well what can i do well this a law that only allows you to punish mm -hmm. because it right, brings right, punishment right 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 you know and so it's so easy to say well if sickness fall on me well that's my punishment right where was your deliverance where was your mercy where was your forgiveness Where's your healing? If you will never be able to receive healing, if all you see is your punishment, because there's no healing if I'm going to look at this law in that perspective, through that channel. It's a outward. Your healing yeah. comes when you renounce mm -hmm. the very dogmas, philosophies of men that crush your testicles. He said it's wise. In your translation, it's wise. It comes from a wise place. Yeah, because they like to seek yeah. wise philosophies. Mm -hmm. and it's Wisdom sound. that is so tricky mm -hmm. that these unsuspecting Gentiles would never understand what we're doing to them. And not even the children can understand it. So you know it's going to mess us up. But I heard the voice. But... It was a strange voice. Sure. You know, it's so strange to me that no way it can be telling me the truth based on what I'm seeing. No way I could be a part of this mm -hmm. based on what I'm seeing because this is not for me. I got a freedom that I can live on and still have what you say you got. Yahweh. And don't have to do the thing that you required to do. I had a, I got a friend. He's moved over to California now. And... He used to live over in Inverary. You know, that's a Jewish community. Mm -hmm. And every Sabbath, he would tell me he would go over there and turn on the microwave for them and turn the light on for them. And he thought he was doing a real good deed. Yeah. And I asked him a question. I said, let me ask you something. You think you're doing something good, don't you, and honorable? He said, I sure do. He said, it makes me feel good when I do that. <laughs> and I said, well, then let me ask you this question. If they're going to get punished for doing it, and you say you serve the same one they're doing, what, what's going to stop him from punishing you? If it's all right for, if they're going to get sent to hell for doing it, right? Hmm? and you're not, and, but you believe he the same one that's going to punish them, well, you you hurting them by having it on because they ain't supposed to have it on, period. You should be telling them not to have it on. Right. Yeah. And he's, it, it started him because he wasn't yeah. thinking like that. No. I said, you actually hurting them. That's right. It's all about perspective. If they're not supposed to have it on. I say, but they're saying to everybody else out there that they don't turn them on. Technically, they're turning them on through you. So you are hurting them. So they're making him sin. Right. But it's their sin because they're actually 
They got blood on working their hands. a servant Absolutely. on the Shabbat. There you go. An uh, unpaid yeah, servant. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? A slave. How experience teaches you of the trickery that's being used to make the law of non effect through traditions. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if y'all with me. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and the law is good, nothing bad about it. If you mm -hmm. use it lawfully. But it can't. It can't. It's not your salvation. It's no. not Yeshua. No. It can't do what Yeshua can do for you. But you can't get to Yeshua without it. That's right. They both are one. That's right. He is the law he of the is spirit. The law. You can't get rid of him. You get rid of the law. You get rid of him. It it, it took experience to yeah, bring me time. here. You, you see you know? the, the thing. What you're touching on, and, and this is what I want to say to people, is: Are you malleable? Mm -hmm. Are you malleable? Malleable means can you be molded and shaped? And in this context, are you being molded and shaped by men mm -hmm. and their traditions? Mm -hmm. Or are you being molded and shaped by Yahweh? Barukashi. There is your paradigm. You choose. Yes. You continue the foolishness of allowing these guys to mold and shape you into whatever they want to produce in you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have crushed seed. If you're tired of it, if you're frustrated with it, if you had enough of it, or if you didn't understand it until now, you now understand it. The burden is now on you mm -hmm. to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Walk away from it. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be easy because mm -hmm. everybody's going to be against you. Mm -hmm. But you and I have done paid that price many times. So yes. I, I take it as a badge of honor. I don't take it as a depressing thing. It, it actually confirms to me that I'm walking in the right way. Mm -hmm. Am I walking perfect? No, I'm not walking perfect. Mm -hmm. My wife can testify to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm trying to allow the rock and I'm trying to become malleable, moldable by Messiah. Mm -hmm. And it takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. Mm 